All right, everybody, I got good dice second design for you this week. This, my friends, is Star Control 2, or more specifically, the Urquan Masters. And this is one of those very weird things. The original Star Control 2 was made by Paul Ritchie and Fred Ford way back in the early 90s. It's considered one of my all-time favorite games. Since the original PC version, a remastered or much better version was released on the 3DO, which I actually own. And that was what I played growing up. Unfortunately, I could never uh, get that to obviously work on the PC. And when I went to run my GOG copy of Star Control 2, unfortunately it does not hold up as well as the 3DO. And that certainly is saying something. So, what I'm playing right now is a open source fan mod that basically takes the 3DO version and makes it compatible for the PC. That's also why you're not going to be seeing anything on the left and right side of things because this doesn't exactly run too well on an HT monitor. But with all that said, this should look and feel and sound just like the 3DO version. And again, uh, the Urquan Masters open source is out there somewhere, so I won't exactly link it here in the description. But now that that little preamble is out of the way, this is one of my all-time favorite games. Definitely in the top 10, it has remained there since the early 90s. A open-style adventure game built around a science fiction arc. Now, Star Control 2 is obviously the sequel to the first game, but the first one was more or less just about combat, or specifically the super melee option. For Star Control 2, they basically add in a grand adventure, as well as non-linear gameplay to it. But, I'm going to jump in-game, see how things sound, and we'll get going and talking about the basics. Welcome back, everybody. So, we are in-game now. And I can talk a little bit more about the basic game design of Star Control 2. Star Control 2 came out at a very interesting time in the game industry, right around the time of XCOM, which we did a dice thing design piece on a few weeks ago. But Star Control 2 features a very similar style of being built around multiple systems. You essentially have, we wanted to be generous, we have three basic game systems here. You have this kind of exploration, we have planetary exploration, and then we have combat. There's also adventure style dialogues, but I didn't really want I didn't include that in the basic gameplay. Now, what's very interesting is the story. There is a whole lot of lore that goes into Star Control 2, but basically what you guys need to know watching this is that an alien race known as the Urquan have taken over everything. You are part of a fringe group who are returning to Earth with a very special ship. That's the, what's called the, our name is the Vindicator. That's the default name. And it's up to us to basically rally the alien races who aren't being subjugated, save the universe, free Earth, and you know, be a hero while exploring the universe. Now, if you haven't noticed, there are a lot of dots on the star map and you can visit every single one. There's even a super secret planet that only shows up at select days of in-game time per month. That's supposedly where there's a grand treasure. And I do not remember where it is on this map. It's somewhere here. When I spoke with Fred Ford and Paul Ritchie about it, or about the star map, all the plants, except for like quest related ones, are procedurally generated, which is quite amazing considering the time this game came out. Now, again, what you're looking at is as close to an approxim approximation as the 3DO version as we're going to get, unless someone can figure out how to stream from a 3DO. I'm going to probably be screwing around with these controls as well. Because it's weird, I'm using a 360 controller on my computer, playing a port or a remaster of a PC game. So it's definitely one of those very weird situations. Your ship travels through inertia, so I wanted to get it to move. We point direction, and then we just let gravity do its course. 
Now get ready for some voice acting, folks. Attention, interloper. Heed this recorded message. This drone vessel speaks with the voice and authority of Irquan. You are trespassing within Irquan space. This world, Earth, may not be approached for any reason. Nor will hostilities against our orbital platform be tolerated. In addition, your ship does not respond to standard hierarchy identification transmissions and is therefore deemed to be independent. This is not permissible. Only subservience shall be tolerated. This drone now leaves to inform the Urquan of your transgressions. You are commanded to remain here and await the arrival of the Urquan. Disobedience will be punished. <laughs> So that is one of the many aliens that we are going to be running into in Star Control in Star Control 2. And I'm, I believe Paul Ritchie himself voiced the Urquan. Incidentally, I think Greg Johnson of Tojem and Earl fame also voiced one of the alien races, which I don't know off the top of my head. But when it comes to Star Control 2, you're going to be interacting with the various races in adventure style format. So there is one more major player we want to talk to. Attention unidentified space vessel. I am Starbase Commander Hayes of the Slave Planet Earth. Our hyperwave broadcast is extremely weak. Situation critical. Energy cores exhausted. Scanners and deep radar are non-functional. We cannot identify your vessel. Are you the scheduled hierarchy resupply ship? Repeat. Are you the resupply vessel? <laughs> and of course we can look at the log right up there. Which to keep this video from becoming like a two hour long one, I'll be doing that for instead of listening to the voice. So, sorry Paul and Fred if you're watching this. Look, I don't know who you are or why... <laughs> The fastest way to get radioactives <laughs> in this system would be to land on Mercury and scour the surface for deposits of radioactive elements. But be careful, Mercury is a pretty inhospitable place. Watch out for earthquakes and those high temperature areas. <laughs> Thanks. Oh boy, this is going to be fun. So, when it comes to exploring the universe in Star Control 2, the plan is we need to hit each planet, or hit their moons as well, looking for resources, creatures to study, and hopefully getting the upgrades and new technology we need to make our ship better and give ourselves a fighting chance. Now for the next part, we're going to talk about landing on planets and look at kind of that subsystem or that game system. So see you all in a minute. Welcome back everybody. Sorry about keep saying uh, are you sure you won't quit? That's because my record key apparently is the exit key <laughs> for this game. But I am not following directions and we're on Jupiter first, or specifically one of the moons. Now one of the major aspects and systems of Star Control 2 is exploring planets. So what happens is we get data regarding the various threats and a situation. So, if you look over here, you can see information such as gravity, temperature, tectonics, and more. I think this is one area where it's probably easier to look at through the PC version, though. As you can see, we have our little lander going about here. And I picked a planet that has no resources, so that's really good. <laughs> Let's get out here and try to find something that actually has something we can look at. Obviously, you cannot land on gas planets. So let's do a scan. There we go, got some minerals. You can see the fuel costs as well. 
Now what's very important is that health in this game is represented by the number of crew aboard a ship. When all the crew are dead, the ship blows up. And it is possible to kind of enter a failure state if you lose your lander before you can actually afford a new one. So while that was a pretty basic plan, let's get to something where there may be some danger. Because one of the major parts of exploring planets in Star Control 2 is the fact that the planet is trying to kill you in a lot of cases. So we'll fly my ship here. And we'll do what our friend on the space station suggested. We'll get some radioactives. Once we complete the starting elements of Star Control 2, we'll be able to talk more about the freeform nature of the design. So if you look over here, you can see the planet is going to be on the hotter side. There's a whole lot of minerals. But there's also going to be a whole lot of danger. Get ready. So the fire, obviously, whoa! Well, and these attacks can happen at any time. Get away from me. What is... Oh, jeez. It's not good to use an analog stick in this game. <laughs> Alright, we're out of room. And because I didn't show this to you guys yet, this is the cargo breakdown, or the price breakdown for harvesting resources. Starting from blue all the way to purple. You can see the cost broken down by their dollars or credits in-game. So basically, blue we want to avoid at all costs, because we do have cargo room to deal with. Where were we? So I do want to try and pick up these last few things, if possible. Again, I gotta be really careful, because if I lose this lander, we're basically done. I don't think I want that to be recorded, especially if I'm sending this video over to <laughs> Paul and Fred. Alright, that's all the normal tier. Damn. I turned the wrong way there. Well, we've already lost three crew members. That's a good sign, right? Now, as with games of this style, it can be a little bit punishing if you're not prepared for some of the craziness that can happen. And to tell you what I mean, let me see. There should be one insane plan in terms of attacks. Was it Uranus or I think this is Jupiter? Let's see. Oh, it's Saturn. Let's see what we got here. Alright, so it doesn't look too bad, but there's not any resources that are worth it. We'll probably find a crazier plan once we begin the actual open world style of the gameplay. But, I'm going to turn these resources in, and we'll be back in a minute or so with talking about the actual combat part of the game. So, I'll see you all then. Welcome back everybody. So, what you're looking at is one of the Ilrath enemies, a, basically a species of evil spiders who are about to try and kill us. But let's listen to the, our little voice here. Since you will soon be dead, I will gladly explain. We have spent many years gleefully preying on the Pekunk. They are a pitiful, easily killed species. And we would have continued in this divine worship of Dogar and Kazon, but we required <laughs> additional crew members and repairs to our cloaking device. So we departed the Jiglas constellation and set course for home. But before we had reached our region of space, we detected the passage of a nearby vessel, the Erquad Drone. It informed us about you, so here we are. And now, <laughs> you die! I don't think we can get along, folks. So, it's time to talk about combat. 
in Star Control 2. It is isometric, which means it's a top-down view. Usually, it'll, I think it's always going to be one-on-one -on -one ships. When one ship dies, if there's any other ships in the fleet, they will join the battle. Now, the Super Melee mode basically lets you play with any of the alien ships and get to try out their attacks and specific powers. Now, the challenge of combat is the fact that you have to deal with inertia as well as turning, and it can be very tricky to aim. Now, what's special is that the Vindicator ship here is unique to the Star Control 2 campaign because it's the only ship that's modular. Once we get to the open world portion of our discussion, we'll talk a little bit more about that kind of progression and the flow of the game. But let's see if we can blast this spider out of the sky. Okay, if you look in the bomb right, oh yeah, and space is, oh jeez, it does cover around. You'll see my health as well as energy. Energy is required to use special and attacks. And my crew member once again runs out. We all die. Don't hit the... Oh, we hit the planet. Now, we're using homing missiles here. God. Oh, and every ship... A beautiful sight. Sorry. Sorry, Captain. We're a little busy here. Every ship in the game has its own different victory music as well. <laughs> And combat, now of course that was the easy fight. We may see more of it as we get further into our video, but I'm gonna wrap this part up, get through the basic dialogue, and I'll be back in a minute and we'll talk more about the actual open world or flow of the game next. All right, welcome back everybody. It's been a little bit since, our, since the end of the last recording. I finished doing some initial scoping out of the solar system. As you can see, we have another ship in my little fleet there, but I'm not going to tell you how I did it, because it's a super secret. But, over the last uh, parts of this video, we've been talking about the basic gameplay system, so Star Control 2. It's time to get to the meat of the situation, talk about the overall progression or goal of the game. So to do that, First, we're going to head back to Earth, because the, your Earth base here is the only area in the game that will allow you to refit and refuel. So you'll be returning to the Soul System quite often. You also notice how slow I'm moving. We're going to alleviate that in the next minute. It's good to see you again, Captain. There's our friend. So I've been gathering resources around the unit. Oh, I'm sorry, around the galaxy, or I'm sorry, the solar system. So you confuse me there. And we now have RU or resource units. This is the primary currency of the game. Certainly, Captain. Let me see. Is he going to give me? Can you be? Let's see. If you have the patience, I would recommend you spend several months or even a year gathering mineral resources. <laughs> You can find such minerals on almost any planet's surface, but the quality and the most worth Again, we can just look at it, like, right here. <laughs> the Maya the Maya would run something like this. <laughs> so I guess we're looking for V. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. So I'm going to tell me about... Yeah, and these are some of the most important parts here. Because the problem with the game is... Or the problem with your ship at the start is that... While the Vindicator will eventually become the most powerful ship in the game... It is very, very weak to begin yeah. with. So to fix that... We need to start upgrading. So, we're going to head over here. And... The ship itself, as you can see, is modular. We're able to add many different aspects of it. Over here are our landers, which cost quite a bit. And if you lose your lander starting out, it's very easy to enter a downward spiral. Over here, we have thrusters, which obviously speed up the ship. Turning jets, which affect turning radii. Fuel tank, crew pod, or self-explanatory. It's very hard to use the 360 control for a game like this. Storage bay again. 
the ion bolt gun. And that's very important because you, the bolt guns can only exist in these blue spots on the ship. So you can shoot from behind or have multiple shots in front. Now what our friend was telling us was about the dynamo. The dynamo affects your energy during combat. The more you have, the more you can basically fire at once. But the first thing that I need to do, really, is get some more thrusters and turning jets. Because trust me, you need them in this game. That should be good for right now. We're going to load up on fuel. And fuel is very important because you do not want to be stranded outside of your respective system. And typically you want to carry double the fuel of wherever you're going. Or fill up your tank. I'm going to go for... let's go for 35 right now just to be on the safe side. I don't think we're going to need more crew just yet. And let me see. I keep forgetting it's a... You're seeing the different sides of the ship. Yeah, 2000 for another ion bolt gun right now is a little too pricey. All this stuff is really expensive, as you can probably tell. We can also add more ships. And increase our crew. Because again, remember, crew is considered health. One arrow of crew, and we are in deep trouble. For right now, we are not going to be fighting with the Vindicator. It's just too weak of a ship. But eventually, we will. So, as you can see, we are moving a little bit faster, and we're turning a lot better. Eventually, we'll be able to like turn, like a turn on a dime, basically. But, let's talk about what's going on. The game is played in quasi-real time. Obviously, we're not going to be spending the next 5-6 years playing Star Control 2. But, as we're flying around, interacting with planets and exploring, time is marching forward. And while the game is non-linear, in the sense that we can explore everywhere that we want, there is a story that's going on. The Urquan, again, the bad guys who have taken over, will eventually come looking for us. And at some point, they will begin a death march towards Earth. If they reach Earth and destroy the base, it's game over. Your job, by before that happens, is to build your fleet and your ship up to the point where you can basically take them on. <laughs> oh my goodness. I thought this was a planet right here, and it's just a speck of dust on my screen. That's how small they are. Now, I was trying to remember, but I think you can zoom in and out on this map. But I just don't know how. And if anyone's watching this, I am going to send this video to Paul and Fred. Maybe they can remind me if there is a way. So right now, these are the species that we know of. The Yorath and the Spati. But again, we have freedom to explore anywhere we want. Come on, you. I'm trying... Again, to see if there is a way to zoom in. Because it would certainly make life a lot easier. But we will have to hold out. So, as you can see, fuel is going up, obviously, the further we go. And it's typically good to fly further away. Or start out as far away as possible and then work your way back in. So, we have 35. So that means about... I should not travel more than 17 fuel away. Because we may not be able to get back in time before we run out. So let's, I don't know, we'll head to this cluster right here and see what we can find. And again, once we have more resources, we'll be outfitting our ship. And like I said, typically you're going to go for movement first. Because you're going to have your other ships capable of fighting for you. I could have also got a more crew member. We'll see if that comes back to hurt me. So this is hyperspace. And this is how we travel to and from the various systems. 
You look in the bottom right, you'll see our position as well as the position of nearby stars. If you see a dark colored blotch heading towards us, that means there's a ship that's going to try and interact. Could be friend, could be foe, but most likely we'll be getting into a fight. And again, you can see time slowly ticking away there. Almost there. And we're in a new system. Oh yeah, this turning rate is so much better. We'll see if we can find some more danger here, too. Now, when you land on a planet, it does cost you fuel. Now, another thing to keep in mind, if we go over here... Yeah, so this is going to cost me two and a half points of fuel just to land on this planet. And those resources are horrible. And how I know this is by looking here. They were all gray color, so that's considered three points of resource per, or base metal. That's not good. And this is a very dangerous planet, because if you look at the tectonic, which I don't know if you can see my mouse cursor, but it's a thing that looks kind of like a uh, heart rate monitor here. That's at on an eight. And eight is very high up. Temperature is looks like it's very cold, so I don't have to worry about that. But landing on this planet is probably not a good idea. Typically, I like to do resources at least four or more. Ideally, when you get seven or eight, that would be perfect, but it is rare for a reason. So let's try next planet. Oop. This is why turning radius or the turning jets are very useful. Ooh, we got several planets. That's probably a gas body in the middle. Alright, so it's a one on the scale. Alright, so we have blue and we have green. So that's four and five. So that's definitely worth a trip down. Now the lightning bolt usually indicates thunderstorm patterns, obviously. So it sounds like we're going to be attacked. We'll see. Yep. Ow. There is an upgrade that will help prevent lightning strike damage, but we don't have it. Ow. Stop it. Lightning's not supposed to strike twice. And I never, I didn't check how much it costs, so point two. So in all honesty, it's probably worth it just to do a quick drop down here. But we won't be going for that last one. So we come back over here to my cargo, not bad. Again, if we can find the rare crystals that are worth 25 a pop, that will certainly make our trips worth it. So let's see what we have, ooh. All right, we did see some biology here, so it looks like there may be some creatures we can capture. Ooh, we almost landed right in the... So grabbing data like this is used for currency with a very specific alien race. Don't hit me, don't hit me, don't hit me. Come on. As you can tell, our gun isn't exactly the strongest either. Right, I need to concentrate for a split second here. Because gathering this stuff is going to help... Ow! Oh, God, that was bad. If we get blown up, we may have to... I may have to erase this, uh... part. Yeah. Better take the safety there. It's like Star Trek. Our red shirts are dropping like flies, aren't they? Hey, hey, hey! Just trying to move forward so we're not staying in one spot because it is random where those things will attack. Whoa! Hey! 
Oh, and by the way, folks, this isn't even the most dangerous kind of planet. This is like a uh, children's playground in terms of difficulty. Oh, hey. Oh. All right. Let's try and save some of our crew, right? Have I been here yet? Yeah. It's the purple one. But collecting biology data or biological data will help out in terms of getting actual upgrades. Ooh. That is purple. And purple is usually the rarest of the resources. And you may be thinking that's just 9, but it's 9 times 25. So that is not bad. And Zeta Centauri seems to be paying off quite nicely. And again, time marches on. Do, 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 do. Alright, so that was two planets down. I think there's two more to go. And I would love to do a Let's Play of Star Control 2. Like I said, it's one of my favorites. Maybe we can make that a Patreon goal. Because I would, like I said, this is a game that you can take a while to play through. Alright, so. That is blues and grays. Yeah, not worth it. Especially if it's going to cost me one complete point of fuel per trip. If we're going to do something that's like one or two points of fuel per visit, it better be at least in the four or five category. And that's obviously the sun. And don't worry, we won't die if we fly into it, thankfully. Uh, for and Paul, we're at least kind on that front. So this doesn't always be a too great of a world. Point three. All right. Not the best, but not the worst. But we won't be doing multiple trips. Because remember, the fuel we're using will have to get us home. All right. Anything. Oh, no, no, no. Not 2.2 points of fuel. And being able to understand what planets are worth landing on, which ones to avoid, is going to help out a lot in terms of your overall survival. So we've been to 1, 2, 3. I think I missed the one all the way at the top, right? I know. It is very slow right now. Again, few more thrusters and we'll be zooming along the galaxy. Hey, 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 back. Nope. Slingshot. Slingshot. There we go. And don't worry, we will probably be getting into a fight in this part. Nope. Yeah, oh, I did this one alright. Alright, so let's leave. And again, you also have to make sure you remember where Seoul is. Because if you forget where your home base is, you're going to be in trouble. Alright, let's start working our way back. And again, if I was playing this for real, we would probably start out much further away. And probably get a fuel... Um, ooh, excuse me. A full fuel tank. That was not easy to say. And start exploring that way. Because remember, every time you go back, that's time spent returning. So you want to make it be worth your while. I hope we can run into one of my favorite races in Star Control 2 as well. Alright, so this is just a one planet. And again, you can always tell by the uh, solar system ring there, the blue dot, uh, blue dot line. So this place isn't going to be all that amazing unless this planet is dynamite. So that is, I see reds and I see orange. So orange is worth eight. 
Looks like there is some tectonic activity, but it's not too bad. And again, always pick up the high value stuff first. Good. Not bad. Alright, now where are we going from here? Like I said, we're just going to do this little cluster. And then we'll move on to probably talking about some of the issues or interesting design points of Star Control 2. But the challenge of the game is knowing when to advance the story or meet with the various aliens, and when you should be spending time gathering resources and upgrading your ship. Because eventually the Vindicator will have to go into combat. And yes, for the next part, I will be getting more thrusters and turning jets. Oh boy, this is a big one. Let's see what we can find. So this is a pretty bad world to land on. The 6 on the Richter scale means that we're going to be hit by earthquakes very quickly and there's only one resource on that entire planet. And I don't think that's going to be paying for the trip. Let's head over here. Uh, still not worth it. If you haven't noticed, you don't use fuel when you're in the solar system. Only when you're in hyperspace or landing on a planet. And since fuel is essentially going to be your main progression gear at the start, it's important to know when and where to land. But, as you can see, we are getting into a lot of planets, so what I may end up doing is finishing this up on my own, and we'll return, or our next one will be back at Seoul, to kind of go over my final thoughts and some of the, I guess, nitpicks with the game, at least from it being so old at this point. But, uh, let's do this last little cluster here. Oh. So there's a lot of life on this planet, but there's also a lot of danger. Let's see what happens. Oh, oh boy. Oh god! This is very bad. Yeah. That is definitely a very interesting plan to go on. I'm going to try one more time from over here, just so we can get some materials. No! Get away from me, you bouncing whatever the hell. Hey! Ow! Uh-oh. We maybe need to make an emergency here. Yeah. Can't do that just yet. Whew. And then the last one was this red one right here. I may actually run out of crew before we get back to Earth. Ooh. Well, I see gold right here. But how bad is this? Oh no, not the lightning again. We need to get that orange. Don't hit me. Don't hit me. And it costs 0.7 to land. It may still be worth it for these last two big chunks. Whoa. Right. 
Get what we can and get the hell out of there. All right, so I'm gonna cut things here. If I can run into the alien race that does upgrading, we will have another extra special part. If not, then we will be back, back in Seoul for my final thoughts. So I'll see you all hopefully in a minute. All right, I did find the trade guy, and this is the Melnorn. Absolutely. <laughs> Primary trade good news information. Why, right here on my display screen, I have something which, I am certain, would be of incalculable value to you. We can discuss the details of this very significant <laughs> information later, when we have established normal. <laughs> you are, of course, correct. We lost. So their job is, or they're going to be our traders, and there will be the primary way we're going to upgrade our various tech. So, no. <laughs> let's see what we can do here. Our origins and purpose. Yes. Now, get, get ready for a second. To business. <laughs> Since this is your first time trading with us, let me explain how. Our system works. And again, I'm just going to skip through because it will take us a lot more time. Mm -hmm. That's a good <laughs> question with a very interesting answer. The fee for this information is 12 million credits. <laughs> I did ask uh, Paul and Fred the, why that turns purple, unfortunately I didn't have the 12 million credits at the time for it, but there are people who are still wondering that. So I'm going to trade in my credits, or trade in myself, so we're going to see what he has access to. Investment. Ah, yes. You are so right. Again, we'll just go through that. All right, so he wants 150, which I don't have. But one of his first texts will be, I believe the texts are randomly shuffled, if I remember right. Because sometimes I start out with enhanced thrusters for the landers, allowing them to move faster and avoid danger. There's also some that will prevent lightning damage, earthquake damage, and so on. I'll also buy fuel. He'll tell us where there's races or additional places to go. And we'll be finding him either in Alpha Centauri and probably around the galaxy as well, or the universe, I should say. Also, before we move on to the uh, final part of this video, I did figure out how to do the star map. It's page up and down with the Urquan Masters port, so that certainly makes things a lot easier. But, I'll see if I can find anything else, and we'll be back in Seoul for our final talk. Welcome back. So, I have just about fully upgraded the ship in terms of thrusters and jets, and you can see things are a lot more mobile now. But, for this final part, I think we'll kind of talk about some of the interesting issues or nitpicks with Star Control 2. This game did come out during, I believe, 1995. If I remember right, for I think that was either the PC or the 3DO version. And the game, at least for by today's standards, is a little bit rough to play. Again, this is this came out during the age of just letting the player do whatever they want, be it good or bad. So if you're hoping for some kind of instruction other than pick a direction and go, you're not going to find it here. And while the game does have some elements of a story, or story patterns to deal with, it is still very much a do-what-you-want-to-do kind of thing, and it's very easy to miss important story beats, or getting the game's good ending. Other than that, I think the game works really well in terms of being very simple to understand, in terms of where you need to go, how the various systems work, and just like XCOM, it's all about the connection of those systems coming together and delivering something that's greater than the sum of its parts. I think for a lot of people, 
playing this game back in the day, it may have been a little bit overwhelming considering how big this game is. But like I said, this is definitely one of my all-time favorite games, and again, it's very hard for me to nitpick it considering how much good it does. Now I just picked the direction of Rigel because I believe this is where one of my favorite races are. So we'll go meet them and then we will wrap things up for this week's dissecting design. Alright, isn't it so much nicer when you can just fly really fast? Alright, where are they? Hello, aliens, are you here? Huh. Did we miss them? Well, let's hope they're in number three. And again, if you take too long, people will die, or alien uh, factions will die. Ah, here they are. That's our warning alert. Attention, Starship. We are the Dark Spot Pit. <laughs> Make no hostile action. We come in peace and with goodwill. But if you make one false move, you're a vapor. <laughs> Don't worry. My companion is just a bit nervous. No, I'm not. And argumentative. No, I'm not. We are a scout vessel dispatched from our home world. We have traveled far through hostile, uncharted space to find you. We hailed from the Green Dwarf Star at coordinate there far. <laughs> Aha! Bahoy Koi! No, you idiot! In their coordinate system. Oh, uh, <clears throat> coordinates 400.0 by 543.7. <laughs> So this is one of my favorite races. This is the, as they say, the Zok Bot Pick. It's basically three races that have all come together to just kind of like work together. And the guy in the back never says anything. That's always the best part about this. But I think with that, I'm going to head back to the menu just for some final thoughts. And you'll have to say goodbye to these guys on your own. So see you all in a second. Alright, now that we've said goodbye to the aliens, I just want to quickly go over just some final thoughts. Like I said, Star Control 2 is considered one of the best games ever made. The combination of open world exploration, space combat, and again, just the, the scope of the design, especially coming from the 90s like that, hasn't really been seen outside of a few other examples. I know one of my friends, uh, Brian Rubin, was a big fan of the Starflight series. And we have seen attempts at more modern, or I guess maybe over the last 5-10 years, other series that have attempted this brand of go anywhere in the universe and do what you want. Especially in the spaceship simulator genre. I know there's, like I think, Elite Dangerous, uh... Probably, I'm not the space guy, and I think if I can somehow summon Brian, he could probably just list like 40, 50 games in the comments below. But, for my money, what I enjoyed about Star Control 2 was the fact that this technically is not a space simulator. It's more of an action or an adventure game, but it just so happens to be set in space, and there is a very big difference in terms of its design. You don't need a flight stick and understanding how to control things in the air in order to play Star Control 2. Now granted, more modern examples of this kind of universe exploring design are far greater in terms of its gameplay and, what you, and its scope, but that genre can still be very overwhelming if you're not used to it, and they sometimes tend to just hit you with a lot of stuff. Especially when they just throw you into the fire with understanding how trading works, what weapons to buy, how to upgrade your ship, where you should be going, and so on. And even and just like with Star Control 2, these games require a massive investment. This is not a 3-4 hour game you're going to be beating over the weekend. And that is, again, one of the best parts about Star Control 2. Now for those of you watching this, can you think of modern examples of this kind of gameplay that manage to keep the open world exploration, but without getting too complex in terms of its gameplay and controls? 
let me know in the comments below. But like I said, if you guys want to see more of it here, I wouldn't mind trying to do this for a Patreon goal. Because like I said, this is one of my top 10 games. And hopefully, Fred and Paul enjoy this. Maybe if we ever do a Let's Play, I can have them on as like sports commentators. Talking about how bad I was at it. And, like, if you... Oh, I'm sorry, if you missed the news, I did speak to them regarding the announcements of their uh, sequel to Star Control to Ghosts of the Precursors. That podcast will be going up in a few weeks. And if they're listening, if they need someone else to do any wacky voices for aliens, please let me know, because I think that would be great. But that is going to do it for this week's Dissecting Design. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to check out Star Control 2, it is currently available with the first game on GOG.com. Like I said, I am playing the open source game, the Urquan Masters, which if you search for it, it's not that hard to find. And be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. Check out Patreon.com slash GWBlazer for ways to support things, as well as get VIP status. And look for future dissecting designs, usually once a week on Monday. That's all for now. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all next week. Take care. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. For my writings as well as weekly podcasts, check out game-wisdom.com. For ways of supporting Game Wisdom and get access to rewards such as VIP status, as well as voting for the Saturday Night Grab Bag, check out patreon.com slash GWBicer. You can follow me on Twitter at GWBicer for my daily thoughts as well as updates as to what's going on. So thanks again for watching, and be sure to check out our next video coming real soon to the channel.